no matter the location. From OAK LA to LV, I'm a Raider. Raider Nation, what's going on? Let's get into the latest here around the Las Vegas Raiders. We're going to kick off the show with some news, and we're going to dive into some more coming up here in a little bit. Andre James, he just agreed to a three-year, $12.5 million extension with the Las Vegas Raiders. Six million of James's contract is fully guaranteed. Last week, the Raiders, they traded away Rodney Hudson to the Arizona Cardinals for a third-round pick, and now... All your confidence that you could possibly have in James, it's it shown, and it showed on the dotted line. When the Rodney Hudson move happened, everyone was like, okay, what are the Raiders going to do now? Here's your answer. I mean, it is Andre James. It's a, somebody who's played in one game last year, does not have a lot of experience whatsoever, but the Raiders are very, very confident in the 23-year-old coming out of UCLA. The other move that the Raiders made last week was Nick Martin. They signed him from the Houston Texans. The contract details, they have still yet to be announced. But when this move went down, everyone was like, okay, Martin, he's going to end up starting for the Raiders, played in over 1,000 snaps last season. I sat here and I said this, no, he's not. He is literally just coming in for depth. Had a lot of people yelling at me out there, but I was very confident that Andre James was going to be the starter coming up. And with the Raiders giving him three years, $12.5 million, $6 million guaranteed, I mean, if that doesn't tell you that he's going to be the starter, I don't know who will. But, hey, you can disagree with me. That's what we do here at Chat Sports. You're always, your opinions are always appreciated. So let me know. Who do you all think is going to be the starting center for the Raiders in 2021? If you're going to sit here and be like, Mitch, it's going to be Andre James. They have a lot of confidence in him. Type AJ. Or you're going to go with Nick Martin. I want you to type NM. As it stands right now, Andre James is the starting center. It is his job to lose. However, you could see a guy work his butt off like Martin, who absolutely could do that, and maybe he could take the starting role. I'd be surprised, but I've also seen crazier things out there. So if Andre James is the starting center, this is what the Raiders' offensive line depth chart looks like. You have Colton Miller slotted in to play left tackle. His backup's Brandon Parker. You could also probably throw Brandon Parker over on the right side as well. Richie Incognito, he just re-signed with the Raiders, which makes Lester Cotton the backup option. Andre James, Nick Martin at center. Big shoes to fill there with Rodney Hudson, one of the most dominant centers over the last decade. John Simpson, who the Raiders drafted out of Clemson in the fourth round, Last season, you could have him at right guard. You could actually also throw Denzel Good to right guard. I just believe as, as the offensive line stands right now, this would be the Raiders' starting O-line if week one would literally be tomorrow. But guess what? That actually wasn't the only move that the Raiders made. They agreed to a deal with Matt Dickerson. One year, $1.25 million deal. As you can see, the Raiders really wanted to be able to upgrade their defensive line. That's what they're doing here with Dickerson. Now, you get a little bit of extra depth on the, on the D-line, but let's just be real. He's mainly going to be used on special teams. A cool little stat out here, shout out to uh, one of my guys, Raider Scout. He was like, he had eight blocked kicks. Like, that's the ability here that the Raiders were probably looking for in Dickerson. Like, all right, how can we get better on special teams? Let's go out and get a guy the cheap one-year, $1.25 million deal. But look at his career stats. And this is in 18 games, 15 tackles, one tackle for loss, zero sacks, two QB hits. You're not bringing him in to be a total, I guess, trendsetter on the defensive line. And just because you brought him in, that doesn't mean the Raiders still won't go out and draft the defensive tackle. They've made a lot of moves recently, especially at DT, by going out and getting a guy like Solomon Thomas one year, $5 million. By going out... And getting a guy like Dickerson, obviously. They also brought in Quentin Jefferson, who could be thrown in there in the nose tackle. I mean, this is a football team. They made a lot of different moves. There's no doubt about it. And when you really look at the outside and the edge now, you have Yannick Ngakwe. You can also slide Kalu and Furl into the defensive tackle. Max Crosby is not going to get as many snaps, but I think his snaps are going to be a lot more valuable to this football team. The Raiders had a, had a goal. How can we get after the quarterback? And to them, instead of going out and spending big, which they haven't done. They were able to save a lot of money on a great deal with Yannick, and now they're building from the inside out. They wanted Leonard Williams, too much money. They wanted Shelby Harris. He ended up going back to Denver. They wanted Dalvin Thompson. He signed somewhere else. So now you see them going with a little bit of lesser bodies overall. What's going to happen with Marcus Mariota? This is a 
big time question here. And again, you guys are watching Chat Sports, and I appreciate everyone coming across this. What's going to happen with Marcus Mariota, quarterback, backup quarterback of the Raiders? If you think the Raiders are going to keep him, type K for keep. If you think they're going to trade him, type T for trade. Or are they just going to outright cut him? I want you to type C for cut. If the Raiders do move on from Mariota, whether it's cut, whether it's trade, we're going to be making a video for you, but I'm going to be making it on the Raiders Report. If you're a diehard Raiders fan, if you bleed silver and black, seriously, go check out the number one most watched Raiders show on YouTube. It's at YouTube.com slash Raiders Report. Slowly approaching 76,000 subs. We're about to hit that John Simpson number. So uh, let's get there. YouTube.com slash Raiders Report. Let's now get into the latest around Mariota and exactly what the hell is happening here. The report last week was... The Raiders asked Mariota to take a pay cut down to $3 million a year. The reason why that's such a big pay cut, he's scheduled to make $10.73 million in 2021. If the Raiders want to move on from him, they save that entire $10.73 million. I said this, the only way he is going to stay in Las Vegas, I'm going to say it again, the only way he will stay in Las Vegas in 2021 is if he restructures his contract because the Raiders are never going to pay him 10.73 when they know Derek Carr is their starting quarterback. Was Mariota good in stints last year? Yes, he absolutely was. But the fact that an NFL team hasn't traded for him just kind of goes to show how bad his contract honestly is. So now... We're talking about Mariota potentially taking that pay cut. And, like, the update today is this, that Mariota, according to a report, is actually planning on taking a pay cut to stay with the Raiders. My only part is this. I saw the report. It's from a, uh, I say, news place from Honolulu, Hawaii, where Mariota was at today. He then flew from Honolulu, and he's on his way to Las Vegas as we speak right now to visit the Raiders. Honolulu took this report and saying, like, hey, since he's going from – here, Hawaii, to the Raiders, he's going to re-sign. Vic Tafer is simply just out there saying, well, that's not 100% true, and I agree with Vic. Vic has done a phenomenal job this offseason, a lot better than a lot of the other Raiders beat writers, there's no doubt about that, but the only way that he is going to play in silver and black is if he takes that deal, and it sounds like that deal is going to be $3 million a year if he does, in fact, decide to restructure his contract. Now, I got a lot of people out there like, man, only $3 million for Mariota. I get it, guys. He was good in week 15. He was good in one game. The ultimate issue was this. The Raiders, they still lost that football game. And then when you really consider all the people that hate on Carr, it's because he doesn't win. Well, technically, Mariota didn't win that game either. Was he great? No doubt about it. If you can restructure his contract for $3 million, the Raiders will do that in a heartbeat. But for Mariota, if he does take this restructure, it's pretty cool. If not, he's going to be out there. There's going to be some other teams interested. There's no doubt about that. So let me hear it now. Where do you guys think Mariota plays in 2021? I want you to comment below. If he would have been a free agent quarterback, I, I, I don't know if I would have put him above somebody like Ryan Fitzpatrick. I don't know if I even would have put him above somebody like Andy Dalton. However... There would have been a lot more teams interested, but the longer he stays on the Raiders, I actually think the more and more his trade value goes down. So I put on the Raiders Report channel uh, a nice little poll, and I was curious on what y'all had to say about it. So basically, this is what I asked. I said, what do you guys think Mariota's trade value is? Raiders Report subscribers said first or second round pick, 23%. 62% of y'all said third or fourth round pick. Fifth or sixth round pick was 10%. Seventh round pick was 1%. 4% was not worth a pick at all. He's going to get cut. I love Raider Nation. Die hard fans, no doubt about that. But this poll just kind of goes to show you sometimes fan bias can get in the way. And I'm simply just saying here, that's why I tell you all to subscribe to the Raiders Report because we're not a fan bias channel. I give it to you straight. I give it to you real. If you want fan bias, I think you guys know where to go on YouTube. Now, that's the Marcus Mariota move. Apparently, according to another report, this one's from Vincent Bonsignor, the Raiders could make one more big move. Let me just say this, okay? Vincent Bonsignor, for like the last week, has been putting out every day, Raiders can make a move, Raiders can make a move, Raiders can make a move. Sooner or later, he's going to hit a shot, right? All I'm saying is if, you're, if you'd send me a Vincent Bonsignor report, I'm, I'm probably not fully going to believe you. However, I do think that the Raiders are going to go out and they are still going to make at least one more big move. When you look at their current cap space, they still have money to be able to make this happen. Plus, the reason is that we're just waiting so long. People are like, when are the Raiders going to sign this guy? When are the Raiders going to go out and do this? The Raiders have been waiting to make a move on Mariota when they have that extra money. 
then they're going to pursue somebody a little bit bigger out there. So what do you guys think? Predict that significant move. What are the Raiders going to do to really shock the world? I don't know if there's another big name free agent out there that they can ultimately do that with. However, we are going to be rolling through here some potential players that the Raiders could go out and sign to maybe make that little bit of a significant move. I know the report's out there. However, th this exact report has been going on now for, I'm not kidding you, basically since March 15th started. And uh, it's, been, it's been kind of fun. It's been overall a good time. But go down in the comments and let me know. Predict that significant move. When I look at the top three biggest needs right now for the Las Vegas Raiders, it's pretty simple to me. There's three needs. One, free safety. You need to be able to go out there and find a top free safety. And who do I think are the three or four most likely players that the Raiders sign? I'll say Xavier Woods. He knows the, the system. Malik Hooker, he's the number one guy that I want. And I think you could also get him at a cheap, reasonable contract. And then Trey Boston. Boston was ended up letting go by the Carolina Panthers, but has a lot of experience with Gus Bradley. In fact, his best year in 2017 was under Gus Bradley. And then Earl Thomas. A lot of people are going to like that. Some people won't. But if you are trying to save some money and you're looking at town and you're looking to take a risk, hey, Earl Thomas also connection there with Gus Bradley. The other top need is this. Right tackle, no doubt about it. You moved on from Trent Brown. If you are confident in Denzel Good playing right tackle, then maybe you don't go out and do it. However, I know the Raiders are still looking at a right tackle, but in terms of making that significant splash, none of the names on here really are going to do that. Sure, Mitchell Schwartz is the most talented, but he's not really 100% healthy. Elijah Wilkinson, actually, and funny enough, he is actually going to visit the Raiders, and that is, I don't know if it's today or tomorrow, but the Raiders are interested in that. But if they sign Wilkinson, that's not a big-time splash. That's not going to be your starting right tackle. That's more of just a little bit of a depth move. So... If that's their plan to take Elijah, look for the Raiders to potentially draft a right tackle at 17 or 48 overall. The last top need, and I think this is where the, the big splash comes, veteran cornerback. The top name that's been linked to the Raiders for about two months, it's been Richard Sherman. However, I don't know if they go big outside corner because everything that I read and everybody that I talk to, it sounds like Trayvon Mullen, Damon Arnett, and Isaiah Johnson are the confident players that they have. Adoree Jackson, he doesn't really fit underneath that better in corner mold, but I do know the Raiders are interested. Casey Hayward's 31 and a half years old. The Raiders, I know, are interested in him. A.J. Boye, he already has come in for a visit. The Raiders seem to be very highly interested in him. If I'm going to go out and get anyone, though, I, I like Brian Pohl. Play him at slot, make him fill in for that LaMarcus Joyner role, but those are the top five corners that I think the Raiders are most interested in right now. So one more time here, here are the Raiders' top needs. You got free safety, right tackle, veteran corner. I also do anticipate this team to be very active, looking for these type of players in the 2021 NFL Draft. I know another player they're going to be still be looking at, Christian uh, Barmore, defensive tackle, Jeremiah Wilson-Koromora. And also, if they don't go out and sign any of those free safeties, they did just have a virtual meeting with Trayvon Merrick, the top free safety out there at TCU. Now, if you guys like what I do here at Chat Sports, at the Raiders Report, if you want to talk more football, you want to talk more Raiders, you guys can always hit me up on Instagram. My DMs are open. If you guys have a question, please slide in. I appreciate talking to everyone. I normally answer my DMs at like 5 in the morning when I get up, so just keep that in mind. I'll go through all of them. Be patient. Again, it's at MitchellRens365.